Hey everybody, picture this. You're young, you're at the local ice cream stand or something similar to that. You're sitting there, you're enjoying your ice cream and suddenly you see a really neat early 50s custom drive by, nice and slow. Remember how that felt like? You remember what it sounded like? Well, today we are going out to Middle Tennessee to try and rescue an early 50s custom. Uh, it's not in the greatest shape. It's been used as a closet for a lot of years. It's surrounded by tall grass. There's snakes in the grass, um, probably bees, but I think you're gonna love this one. Um, I'm excited to, to get into it and see what's going on with this car, so come on along. Today's project is this 1950 Chevy. Um, it's been sitting a long time, but we're gonna get it running today for the owner. 1950, man. 1950, that's right. We're going to get this thing running for the owner, air up the tires, and uh, maybe maybe pull it out of here for him. Um, it's the original six-cylinder engine. No, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, I had one of these. I should know better. You did? <laughs> yeah, a red one. Okay. Um, completely intact, which is, which is great. It's got an alternator, so it must have been converted to 12 volts. Got all kinds of extra stuff around. Um, you know, at one time this paint was real nice, real nice, but it's been here a while. Uh, that tire, oh, look at that. Wow, it's got uh, chrome, chrome steel wheels on it. How cool is that? This one's been flat so long it's out, off the rim. All right, um, real interesting inside. It's clearly it's been used for storage for a while, but look on the lower left. I've never seen heater controls like this. I had a 50 Chevy once. It, it had the factory heater. It didn't look like that. This might actually have an aftermarket heater, but look at the cool Art Deco dash. <laughs> I always loved that. Absolutely loved it. These door panels aren't original. The headline is not original. Somebody had restored this thing once. Really, really nice. But it was a very long time ago. It looks like it sat out here for quite some time. Um, see the door panels are coming apart. I have no idea what those are for right there. Uh, if you know, put something in the comments because I don't know mine had an aftermarket wheel so it didn't have that the paint some of it's just coming right off this wheel has a little bit of air in it so that will pump up no idea what's in the trunk um, this plate does not have a year oh, it does have a year on it 2001 so about 22 years it's been here. It's pretty straight. I mean, look at the side of this right here. It's pretty straight. You know, it's obviously rusted here, but that fender is solid. I don't want to open this door just yet because I have no idea what might be living in there. I'm going to get the weed whacker and cut some of this down. But it looks like that tire is up. That tire has some air in it. So I'm optimistic we're going to get this thing running today. Look at this cool visor. Um, I just love these. Many years ago on my channel, probably 2015, I had one of these. It was red and I did a 14 part series where I pulled it out from under a tarp in Texas and got it running and driving before I sold it. 
and unfortunately somebody hacked into my account and deleted nearly all those videos if you look through my channel you'll see a couple left from it but most of them are gone um, so this is going to be like a return to the past for me it's going to be a lot of fun come on baby That's not good. just to get it out of the way. But it's intact. I mean, the battery cables are intact. There's no air filter on it. That always worries me. And the choke is wide open. So... Sometimes the Chevy's air uh, water leaks through the seam and can go right into the engine. Doesn't look like that happened here, luckily. Luckily. Uh, let's, let's see if it's seized. It is not. It is not seized. Oh boy. That's a nice bonus. So I'll spin it around a couple of times. But with the grass cut, you can get a better view of it. It doesn't have the chrome reverses on the back. But that does look like a reversed wheel, oddly enough. Um, so maybe it's custom made. I don't know. Be careful here. There's usually hornet's nest. They yep. Ow. <laughs> All right. My first bite. <laughs> All right. We'll leave those guys alone. Um, good thing I'm not allergic. Uh, let's see. 
I think that's about it before we start on it. The roof, here's, here's a good indication how long it's been here. The sun is completely baked off the roof. The paint off the roof completely. Okay, oh, and this window's down a little bit. That doesn't help us. Okay. Feels like it's got good compression. Oh yeah, when it's on the compression stroke, it's pretty hard to turn. <clears throat> like now. But when it's not, it turns real nice. <clears throat> Alright, this thing is ready to take the next step because the engine is free no problem let's check the water there's nothing in there as you can imagine but i bought i brought some antifreeze so we'll take care of that throttle linkage oh, well that's not connected or is it yeah it is connected I had forgotten that it's, it routes onto the floor on these because mine had been converted to master cylinder up there and uh, all this, everything was routed up above. But that was working. Old style oil filter, but it's good to have it. Some of these didn't have oil filters at all. Maybe you didn't know that. And you can see how aftermarket this one looks. It's actually bolted onto the manifold because I believe factory these didn't have them. This is a 216 six cylinder with about 95 horsepower. Not very powerful. These cars were typically pretty low geared because of that. Usually 370s or 411s, but you could get uh, 350, I think was the most friendly ratio. These plug wires have seen better days for sure. They are crispy tiny little distributor cap look at that tiny little thing uh, but the start is right there it's going to be real easy for me to get my trigger on it so let's start doing that cleaning these up nice they've been here a while but they're not bad and look at that it's red like it's supposed to be a lot of these old cars I see have black on red and vice versa And oftentimes both black. The first thing I'm going to do is this is a real short cable, and this isn't the right kind of battery. Um, this is a group 34, and it looks like it needs a 34F. So I'm going to have to get creative with the battery placement, but I'm going to touch it, see if I get any spark or any smoke. And I don't see anything. No spark inside, no spark outside. So that's all good. That's all real good. Okay, cut. Okay, in order to sit in this thing, I've got to move some of this stuff out of here and Frankly, it terrifies me. I've already gotten stung once. Um, there could be anything living in here. I already saw a snake earlier today over there. Um, so this is, uh, this is probably the worst part of rescues right here, is worrying about the things you'll encounter. But that's cool. That's the original oil bath air cleaner. I'll explain how those work in a bit. This is uh, trim. Goes around here like that only like that inside that's pretty neat does it need it yeah it's removed on both sides so that's for this car i'm real happy to see i haven't even seen a spider um, if you've watched some of my other videos you know that a will it run would not be complete without bungee cords. 
There's always spongy cords in these things. I don't know why, but there always is. It's a pretty nice close. Okay, um, there's a blanket here that stretches over the seat that I'm going to use. I've got a key that fits this, but the key is in the on position. Amazing, window rolls down so easily. Whew. All right. I'm going to see if this thing turns over. Now these, it doesn't turn over from the key. There's a starter button. Come on over and let me show you this. See this button right here? That's how you start it. It does have a key, but the key is used for the ignition only. So you turn the key to on, turns on the ignition, then you hit the starter. So I'm going to hook up the battery and see if this guy turns. But before I do that, I've got to check the oil. I know the water is low. Find the dipstick. Okay, that's bad. There's almost no oil in it. So I can't start it like this. Luckily, I brought some. So I'm gonna put some in it. Hopefully I've brought enough. There is a little on the stick, so I think I have. I know that the best thing to do is warm it up and drain the oil, but I can't even warm it up without anything on the stick. That's just not an option. So let's see if that made a difference. did not. It didn't make a bit of difference. Boy, that's not a good sign. I mean, I don't see anything leaking out. And it's, I mean, it turns over by hand, so it's not seized, but what I'm going to do next, I'm going to jack up the front Make sure there's a drain plug in it because this thing is really dry. It's too dry. To I had to put a four, four full quarts of oil in this thing. Unbelievable. Um, and now it's right, right almost where it should be above the ad line, below the fill line. But that is crazy. Um, I'm not sure where the oil went. All right, let's start with number three since it's easy. Looks pretty good. Yep, it's uh, carbon, carbon fouled, but there's no, there's no real oil on it, and it's a. Uh, it doesn't appear to be worn at all. Gap's a little tight, but it doesn't appear to be warm. So that's a great sign. Um, I'm going to put this one back in and move on to the next. Here is number two. Got a little bit of oil on it. A little concerning about that. Uh, oh, wow. Also, the insulator. I don't know if you can see that, but the insulator's got a chip out of it. That's interesting. Um, could be a manufacturer's defect. Could be caused by some pretty massive detonation. I can't imagine, though, that, that this vehicle would have detonation like that, um, given its low compression back in the day. Um, but we'll keep an eye on that. This, if, so far, if any cylinder is going to give me any trouble, it's going to be this one, just because there's a slight, slight bit of oil on it. Um, so now we'll move on to the rest, and then I'll get back here. 
that was the only one that had a problem. So next up is to uh, disconnect the fuel line. Before I get to the fuel line, I'm actually going to check for spark. I've cleaned up under the cap and it looks like I've got most of the crud out. It really wasn't bad and it doesn't look that old. Um, the points are right down there. Sometimes if you're close enough to the uh, high point, you can, yeah, and this is definitely close enough, high point to the uh, distributor cam, you can, uh, you can see if it's, you can see if it's going to spark without turning the engine over. So let me try that. I'm, I'm jumping the coil just, just for kicks since we don't have a key and, and all that stuff. Oh yeah, we got great spark. Um, let's see if I can get you in there to see it. Yeah, you can even hear it. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, that's pretty amazing that I didn't even have to clean those points. I, I don't remember the last time I did one of these rescues with points and I didn't have to clean it. That is unbelievable. The distributor cap just snaps back in place. All right, now on to the fuel line. All right, so I've disconnected the fuel line because I just don't want uh, there to be any um, issues with pumping bad gas out of the fuel tank and getting it up into into the carburetor. So this is just a test. Um, I'm going to try it uh, just with a little bit of chainsaw gas in here. Um, the, the radiator I filled, so it's good to go. I put antifreeze in it so that if it sits here for another winter, it won't freeze. Um, I'm going to use the starter button inside to uh, to try to kick it over. Let me hook the battery up. And my ignition. Like I say, I'm not sure I need that ignition, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to pour a little gas in and also fill the bowl up a little bit. Well, let's see. <clears throat> let's see what that does. <clears throat> I use chainsaw gas because it's got oil in it, and it's really helpful to a dry engine uh, on first start. Okay. Well, it always helps if it's a neutral, but that's a good sign. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. 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 That's crazy. That is crazy. Can you believe it? That thing fired right away. Nothing came out of the fuel pump. Um, that might mean that the tank is dry, or it may mean that um, the fuel pump shot. But we'll figure that out later. So I've got my handy dandy funnel fuel line in place and uh, let's see how that works get this guy set up again um, going to prime the carb just a little bit again because I ran the, the bowl dry but let, let's see how this does Well, 
helps if you hook up the battery of course again something I never do It looks like it's picking it up. Oh, wow, great spark. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's working beautiful. It runs wonderful. Considering it's been sitting here all this time, I mean, look at that. I can't wait to move this thing. pressure is excellent it's charging of course the gas gauge doesn't work you're gonna have to wait a minute for the temp gauge Wow, incredible, incredible. Okay, I'm gonna shut it down. Fantastic, fantastic. On the tires, this one came up real nice. Uh, and I've got extra air in this can, so I'm going to try the front one. Yeah, this one's got air in it. I can tell this is this valve stem's really in bad shape. Really in bad shape. Yeah, this, this valve stem is leaking air fast as I can put it in. Boy, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Well, let's get the rear on the other side. Gotta watch out for the wasps here. They're gonna be none too happy with me. Uh, the brakes are completely gone. That's a major bummer, but it's okay. We're going to still move it. Okay. Would you like me to put it there, or just move it out and put it back in, or? Uh, I can I can move it still can and put it on cross here. What do you think? That's if you, that's what you want. We can do it. All right, I gotta clean the windshield in order to move this. And I don't have any glass cleaner. It looks like most of the crud's on the inside. Probably because this vent window was broken. All right, that's enough for me to see out. so hot out. It's 
carb cleaner is drying before it does anything. It's drying immediately. Wouldn't be a video. I'll have some more here in no time. <laughs> I guarantee you that, and I'm gonna I'm treat you too. <laughs> no, treat you. no treat necessary. Our treat is, is the look on your face when we get them started. I've had 47 points, 48 points. All okay. kinds. What do you think, man? You happy? Yes, I am. Good. I'm, Good. I'm overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Well, it's running beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. Looks good. 1950 Chevy. Look at it. Even had a tree growing up yes. in the middle of it. It's getting ready to run out of my little gas tank, but listen to that thing run. It's just purring. Just purring. It's got good oil pressure and everything. That's really how easy it starts. Radiator is working great. How can you tell? You look where the water is coming in versus where it comes out. Super hot up here, cool down here. So we only warm. So it's circulating great, cooling good. Um, of course, it's running good. Put the air filter back on. These things have oil in them. The oil catches the dirt along with the paper. It's a cool old system. All right, I got the gas can now hooked to the fuel pump in an attempt to see if the fuel pump works. All right, let's try that now. Turn the key to on. Oh, there's no clamp on that fuel line. That's not good. I'm going to have to fix that. But other than that, that fuel pump's working great. I don't know who in the world would have left that without a clamp on it. But that wasn't too bright. But look at that. Oh my God, look at this thing. It's just purring. Awesome. Totally awesome. So happy the fuel pump's working. So happy. All right, no more leaks. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. 
just in the carburetor a little bit. Okay, it didn't like that. Back it back out. Looks like it was set. Oh no, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Let's see if it runs without my jumped ignition. It does not. Okay, uh, it's all running great. Radiator's beautiful, warm up here, cool on the bottom or warm on the bottom and hot up here it means it's working good. Air cleaner's on. Um, it's almost ready to go with a couple of tires and the brakes fixed. So subscribe, hit the bell. We've got lots more of these Willet Runs coming up this summer. We've been working like crazy to get them done. Um, we got another old Chevy like this. We got a, a dually truck, an old dually. We've got a Maverick, all kinds of stuff. Um, you're going to love it. So please subscribe and uh, thank you. Have a good day.